Hello, everyone. I'm Jun Hao Zhou from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. It is my honor to share with you our paper, Property Inference Attacks Against Games. This is a joint work with Yu Feitan, Chao Shen, and Yang Zhang. Then let's start the presentation. Nowadays, machine learning has progressed rapidly, and games have attracted more and more attention. Due to the ability to produce new novel samples, GANs are used in many applications, such as image generation, image imprinting, audio generation, image to image translation, and so on. However, machine learning models also have many security and privacy problems. The model itself can be stolen, and the data set can be analyzed by membership or property inference attack. Nowadays, most of the attacks against the generative models focus on membership inference attacks. So in this paper, we want to explore the property inference attacks against games. Our attack is defined as this. Based on target gain, the adversary aims to infer whether the target gain's underlying training dataset has a certain general property. Just like facing a target gain, which is used to generate human phases, our target general property can be the proportion of males or white people in the dataset. We can find that the general property mentioned here is not related to the design purpose of the target gain. A successful property inference attack leads to different effects. For instance, learning the property of a GAN's training dataset gains extra information of the dataset. And this directly violates the intellectual property of the model owner. Also, our attack can be used as a fairness auditing tool to make sure a GAN is not trained on a biased data. Moreover, this attack can be a stepping stone to perform more advanced attacks, such as membership inference attack. As the generated samples of a GAN can reflect its underlying training data size properly, we design a general attack pipeline, including three steps. Firstly, we curate the target again to produce some samples. Here we may generate samples randomly or according to specific plating codes. Secondly, we construct a property cluster to analyze the generated samples. The mission of the cluster is to get the possibility of a sample having the target property. Thirdly, we use a function file to extract the property inference result. In this way, we can infer the underlying property of the target dataset. Here, we further show our full black box attack. In this setting, we can only collect generated samples blindly. Here, we show the method to infer the proportion of males in the training dataset. Firstly, we collect a number of images from the target gen. Secondly, we need to use a gender classifier to analyze each phase to find the possibility of each phase as a male. Finally, we can simply populate the average score of the classifier outputs and use that average score as the inference result. Then, in the partial black box setting, we can feed chosen latent codes to the target GAN and collect the responding generated samples. Also, we can use shadow models to optimize the latent codes. To optimize latent codes, we firstly construct a number of shadow datasets, which are used to train relative shadow GANs. And the shadow datasets should be sampled to fulfill a certain shadow property. Then we randomly choose a shadow GAN at the implement 
the property influence attack on the Trojan guy. Next, we can construct a loss function based on the inference result as a shadow gains property. Finally, we optimize the input latent cause based on the loss function and use the optimized latent cause to achieve our partial black box attack. In this paper, we evaluate the performance of our property inference attack under five different settings. Let's start with our full black box attack performance. Here, each point in the graph represents the attack result of a target plan based on 20,000 random samples. The x axis of the point shows the real underlying property, and the y axis shows our property inference attack result. Then we plot a blue line as the average attack result for target models sharing the same underlying property. Finally, a dotted line is given as the best attack result, where the inferred corruption is exactly equal to the ground truth property. As the average inference line lies close to the benchmark line, our full black box attack is effective. However, the result in the red is not so good as a property class here, here only has around 80% testing accuracy. Then we evaluate the influence of the number of random samples. We repeat our full black box attack using different number of samples and average the results for target gains sharing the same underlying property. For instance, we plot a blue line here to represent the average inference performance against target models with 30% of males. With the increasing number of random samples, the given lines become lower and smaller, which means our attack becomes more accurate and more stable. Then let's see our partial black box performance. Just like before, the blue points represent the target models with relative underlying property and the inference result. A blue line is plotted here as the average attack performance, and a dotted benchmark line is given as the best inference result. Here, we get an average inferred corruption of near 49% for the target models with half males in the data set. As the attack performance is close to the benchmark line, our partial black box attack also produces good results. Note that we only use 100 optimized samples here, so it is reasonable that the inference result has a relatively large deviation. We also show how the number of optimized samples influences our partial black box attack. In this section, we use different number of optimized samples to achieve our attack, and then use box plot to show the overall attack performance. We also add a red line to show the average accuracy. We can find that the accuracy increases slightly when using more optimized samples. This also means a small number of queries is enough to achieve our partial black box property inference attack. As our full black box attack does not require any internal information of the target gain, this full black box method can also be used by the partial black box adversary. So we make a further combination between these two attacks. Facing a specific size of the latent code site, 200 for this point. We perform partial black box attack once and full black box attack 80 times for each target again. Then we compare the results and for all target models, we calculate the ratio of how many optimized samples produce a more accurate inference. 
In most cases, the ratio is over 50%. So our partial black box attack is more accurate when using a small number of samples. Also, as the number of samples increases, more full black box attack behaves better than the partial black box. In the above results, we have found that the property classifier can influence our attack a lot. So here, we download an MDB wiki gender classifier to achieve our attack. We plot the average inference result line and the benchmark line as before. Our inference attack on the left still has a good performance, but the accuracy decreases a lot on the right. Then we add a line to show the performance of the classifier on the underlying dataset. We can find that the green line itself has a good depth, which means the classifier has a better performance on the target gains dataset. And our inference result lies closely to the dataset property inference inferred by the classifier. This phenomenon reveals that the property classifier plays an important role in our attack. Next, we want to enhance the membership inference based on our property inference attack. In general, membership inference attack intends to infer whether a query simple belongs to the underlying training dataset. Facing a target again, we can use different keys to generate a most similar sample compared to the QE one. Then we can achieve the membership inference based on the similarity between these two samples. Formally, if the rebuilding error is smaller than F0, then the QE sample is considered as a member. Our enhancement follows an intuition that a sample has a larger possibility to be a member when it has the same property with the majority of samples in the target BNS dataset. So our enhanced membership inference as an item following an epsilon. When the target sample shares the same attribute as a higher proportion of the underlying training dataset, the new threshold rises and leads to a better membership performance. Here we consider four target plans, and for each one, we assume that the adversary has known the underlying property. We can find that with the help of the property information, the membership inference attack does behave better. In summary, we perform the first property inference attack against generative models and we propose responding solutions for two black box settings. Then, extensive experiments show the effectiveness of our attacks. Also, we enhance the membership inference attack based on our property inference attack. That's all. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please let me know.